Good morning, uh, everyone. Welcome to, this is sort of a semi-regular thing we do here with Select Chicago, the foreign direct investment organization that represents the greater Chicago region. Um, it's a privilege to see so many people here. Um, I especially want to thank so many of the uh, Japanese representatives in the room today. We have representatives from the Japanese Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce and Jetro as well, but also the Consul General of the, of the Midwest region. And it's a, honestly, it's a privilege to have you here as well. And also two longtime Japanese-based companies in Arlington Heights that it's a privilege to have here, uh, Figaro and Kanamatsu. Um, thank you, everybody in attendance. We really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Michael Murtis. I am the business development manager for the village of Arlington Heights. And before we start the program, I just wanted to take a moment to introduce uh, our mayor, Thomas Hayes. Uh, he's just begun his third term as the village president. Um, so we, of course, greatly appreciate his service. And I'd like to turn it over to him for a minute or two uh, if he'd like to say a few things. Thank you. Well, thank you, Michael. And thank you all for joining us on this beautiful day in the village of Arlington Heights. Uh, it's been a very challenging almost year and a half now for all of us, not just here in our local community, but around the world. Uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, we're hoping to be on the other side of it, although we're a little bit concerned, of course, about the Delta variant and uh, resurgence, but hopefully we're on the other side and moving in the right direction now. But again, thank you uh, for joining us here in Arlington Heights on this beautiful sunny morning. We have a great relationship with uh, a lot of community partners, but especially with the Japanese American community. And so I've had a number of uh, opportunities to, to be hosted by uh, organizations and individuals, including the Council General, at uh, their residence in Evanston uh, as part of uh, our partnership. And so I have, uh, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to have you join me in my house, so to speak, here in the Arlington Heights Village Hall. And so again, welcome to our community. Uh, I want to talk just a, for a minute about Arlington Heights and uh, our, the city of good neighbors, as is our motto here. And we do consider ourselves a city of good neighbors, a very welcoming community. If you don't know, we're, we are a town of 76,000 people. Right now, at least, we're the 13th biggest town in the state of Illinois. We're waiting for the current census figures to come out, but hopefully we'll stay in about that range. And so we're very proud of our community for a number of different reasons, but especially because we are a very welcoming community to anyone who chooses to live or work here. And so, uh, and we are also very proud of our relationship with our many community partners, as I said, especially the Japanese American community and any other foreign uh, businesses that want to uh, spend time or invest here. And so uh, we can't thank you enough for your partnership with us. That's something that is very valuable to us with uh, all of our community partners is this sense of teamwork, of working together. Uh, in whatever fashion that is, whether it's with our residents in a number of different capacities or with our business community. We've received a number of different awards here in Arlington Heights. One of the things that I'm most proud of is that we consistently are uh, found to be the best place to live in the Daily Herald readership area. We were just voted that again here uh, in 2021. And also our downtown area, if you've had the opportunity to go to Arlington Al Fresco at all, just a couple of blocks from here, has been voted the best downtown in the Northwest suburban area, the Daily Herald readership area. So we're very, very proud of our community for a number of different reasons. We've also won awards for the, um, the way that we work together with our businesses, our business friendly environment. And so we're very happy with that, we're very proud of our, our planning and community development department headed up by Charles Perkins and Michael Murtis and uh, all of our great team here in Arlington Heights that works together with our businesses. They're so important to us for a number of different reasons, but we couldn't do it without you. And so we very much appreciate your assistance in enhancing the quality of life here in Arlington Heights that I always say is second to none. Again, we've got a great relationship with the Japanese American community. I've been in a number of different festivals, New Year's Eve parties, uh, a number of different things with them and very, very much appreciate that. We do have a, a partnership exchange program with Shitara Japan through uh, our 
School District 25. And uh, we're hoping to reinvigorate that now in the post-pandemic environment. I'm hoping to get over there myself one day. It would be great to get over there now during the Olympics, but unfortunately, as you know, uh, they don't allow audience members right now. So it's unfortunate that um, you know, the TV coverage has not been able to really emphasize the great country that Japan is and all that it has to offer to not only its residents, but residents from around the world. So we just thank you for all of your involvement in your businesses. Hopefully your uh, continued involvement in Arlington Heights. The Select Chicago program is just a great program. I'm just learning more about it myself now, but it uh, is just a great program which allows you to invest in uh, the United States of America, and especially in the Chicagoland area, I know the Council General has 10 states that he's responsible for. It's a big area. I know, Mr. Council General, you've got a lot of responsibility. And so um, we very much appreciate Select Chicago's uh, program and all that they have to offer local communities like Arlington Heights. Um, Council General Okada just told me that he is about to leave his, his uh, term here in the Chicago land area, and so I very much appreciated his uh, partnership with me personally, his friendship with me, and uh, all the things that we've been able to do together. And so, uh, Mr. Council General, if you come up for just one second, could you come up for just a minute? I would like, uh, in uh, recognition, in recognition of everything that you've uh, meant to the village of Arlington Heights and all of the states that you represent, if you could just turn this way for a second. Uh, and all the things that you've represented to uh, the 10 states that you represent, but especially the village of Arlington Heights. I just wanted to present you with this village coin, mm -hmm. which we present to very special people, very important people. And so we would hope that you would, there's no monetary value to this. So we, <laughs> you can't uh, trade it in for anything, but hopefully it'll, it'll hold a special place in your heart or in your office, wherever that is. And so I just wanted to present you and thank you for thank all you. that you've done for our community and the mm -hmm. Chicagoland and Midwestern region. So mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> well, that's all I have to say. Just have a great uh, morning this morning. I know you're going to... Uh, receive a lot of great information about Arlington Heights and investment opportunities here in this area. So great to see a lot of familiar faces again. I thank you all for joining us today. Thanks so much, Mayor Hayes. And thank you again, Consul General Okada, for your service too. We greatly appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Select Chicago, for the opportunity to highlight uh, the village of Arlington Heights, why uh, we are a great location for foreign direct investment and investment basically at all levels, from top to bottom, from one-person businesses to 1,000-employee companies in the community. And Mayor Hayes said it best in terms of referencing the city of good neighbors. Um, good neighbors aren't just residents. Uh, they're all our community stakeholders, and that includes the 3,000-plus for-profit businesses that we have in Arlington Heights that have been good neighbors, that have invested in our community. And so we're so fortunate for what they do to help make Arlington Heights the destination that it is for so many people. And I just kind of want to go over just a little bit of background about Arlington Heights. And I like to say it's village in name and city in opportunity. Our legal name is the village of Arlington Heights. When we were founded in the late 1800s, just a few hundred people we've now blossomed into a community of nearly 76,000 people. And even though we still have the village name based upon uh, state designation, we consider ourselves a city in opportunity. We offer the amenities and the opportunities that a small, mid, or even large sized city offers, but obviously in a smaller 16 and a half square mile area. But at the same time, it's a village in that so many people know each other and continue to work with each other, communicate with each other, and it's amazing how often you run into people that you know when, uh, when you're around the community. Median household income is around $100,000. The median household value is around $360,000. And one of the things that the community has done in recent years is made a concerted effort to promote 
uh, affordable and inclusionary housing to ensure that not just in the present, but in the long term, Arlington Heights is a welcoming community to all people of all backgrounds and also of all demographics, upper class, middle class, working class. And so a concerted effort to provide inclusionary housing continues to progress. We are a very educated community. 96% uh, of our residents have the equivalent of a high school graduate degree or higher, and nearly 60% have the equivalent of a bachelor's degree or higher. Strengthening our diversity. So we are a diverse community in terms of several things. First of all, one in every four residents in Arlington Heights speak a language at home other than English. And one in five residents not only weren't born in Arlington Heights, they weren't even born in the United States. And they've come here and value Arlington Heights as a great place to live, which we're extremely grateful for. And among one of our growing demographics is per census reports, our Asian population has nearly doubled over the past 20 years, making up about 10% of the resident population of our community. And another thing I wanted to highlight as well, um, in recent months, the Village of Arlington Heights has undertaken the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Initiative, or the DEI for short. This is a formal program that we are doing to not only acknowledge diversity in our community, but truly embrace it, to understand it and do what we can to not just say we're welcoming community, but actually live that mantra. And I don't wanna go into too much detail of sort of these pillars of that idea. You can find this information on our website, vah.com, that goes into greater detail. But one thing that I did kind of want to take from the DEI position statement, if I can take a moment for that, diversity in Arlington Heights means respecting and welcoming all individuals with diverse backgrounds, experiences, perspectives, and cultures. This commitment to diversity is the foundation for building and maintaining a high quality workforce, government operations, and community inclusion in these processes. Diversity and inclusion are core values and strategic imperatives that build and support the strength of the village of Arlington Heights as both a community and as a government. And these are words that we want to live by moving forward. And as I mentioned before, these are specific examples of ways we would like to try and actually uh, make that a tangible thing. And one other thing, in 2019, the Village Board made a formal strategic priority that said, find new ways to embrace diversity within the community and village government, which really ties into that. So I do strongly encourage you to visit our website to learn more about this DEI initiative that we're undertaking. Quality of life is one of the things that attracts both residents and businesses to Arlington Heights. And I have a few examples. Uh, at the lower left-hand corner is the Chicago Futabakai School, uh, which is an institution here in our community. Um, at the top left, we have the Arlington Heights Memorial Library, which, as I'll go into, is more than just a source for media in the community. And in the bottom right corner is Lake Arlington, one of over 50 public parks and facilities that our park district offers to our residents. I mentioned quality of life education being a critical element to that. Um, Arlington Heights since 2010 has had seven national blue ribbon schools, which is a designation given to Arlington Heights by the US Department of Education. Only about 15 to 20 schools in Illinois every year obtain this designation. It covers all grade levels. It covers both public and private schools. Um, it's a really prestigious honor that emphasizes how important and how successful our education system is in terms of testing and closing the achievement gap. Also, Township High School District 214 features two of the 25 best public high schools in the state of Illinois, according to US News and World Reports, um, further showing that beyond elementary school, our educational achievement is really at the very high end and also Harper College for post high school education serves uh, the residents of Arlington Heights for maybe those who are either on the way to or aren't looking to achieve a four year degree and they offer a wealth of resources as well. The Arlington Heights Memorial Library is a 10 time recipient of the Library Journal's five star designation, the highest designation that the Library Journal offers any library. It is one of the best libraries in the country for its size, only about 
five to 10 libraries each year in the state of Illinois obtain that designation. And it's based on a variety of things from access to programs to circulation. Um, so I encourage you to visit the Library Journal's website to learn more about that as well. They also offer a business center. If you are an employee or a business owner in Arlington Heights, but not a resident, you're still entitled to obtain three, business, uh, three library cards where you can access not just the media, but the business center, which offers trade journals, it offers access to mailing and media lists, and it also offers free online seminars as well. Um, it's a tremendous asset to our business community as well and is a free resource. This year, the library is opening up a maker space called the Maker Place, which will allow more hands-on education, access to 3D printers, access to a commercial kitchen, further expanding the services that the library offers to our community to try and continue to be an elite library throughout the Chicago region. And then I mentioned the Park District as well. It offers 58 public parks and facilities, five outdoor swimming pools, two golf clubs, two tennis clubs, also seven seasonal ice skating rinks, a cultural center, a historical museum. Uh, the Park District really offers a wealth of amenities for our residents um, and an extensive amount of free opportunity for them. Another thing that brings people and businesses to Arlington Heights is our location, our proximity to the greater Chicago region. And it starts with our access to two airports, O'Hare International Airport and also Chicago Executive Airport. Uh, where depending on where you are in Arlington Heights, you're only 15 to 20 minutes away by car from each airport. So besides just travel for business or leisure, uh, O'Hare is also one of the world's largest cargo airports that provides an opportunity for our industrial businesses to both receive and ship off uh, product as well. The Metro commuter rail station uh, in Arlington Heights, actually both of them, are two of the 20 most traversed stations in the entire metro system, which is over 220 stations. Um, it shows Arlington Heights is both uh, not only a commitment from residents to using public transportation, but also the ability for Arlington Heights to access downtown Chicago, which you can in 45 minutes or even 30 minutes with an express train via metro. And we also offer six pace bus routes and pace on demand, which is more of a call and ride system that's offered to much of the community as well. And then, of course, vehicular access. Uh, Arlington Heights has direct access to three interstates, I-90, which runs from coast to coast, 290, which runs to downtown Chicago, and then 355, which connects southward down to St. Louis and all the way down to New Orleans via 55. US 12 and US 14 also run through our community and are two of our more traverse roads through Arlington Heights. And then lastly, an opportunity for businesses is Union Pacific Commercial Rail. There are businesses that perhaps is an alternative to trucking or that perhaps have larger freight that it can be done by vehicle, take advantage of the Union Pacific's commercial rail line as well. Economy. Arlington Heights prides itself in having a very balanced economy. And I kind of wanted to show this in these four pictures. In the bottom left, we have a company called International Services that just moved to Arlington Heights this year reoccupying a 95,000 square foot vacant building and bringing over 300 employees to the community and helping strengthen our office uh, uh, sector. Amazon has recently invested in our community as well, opening up a warehouse logistics and distribution facility as well. In the top right is Mitsua Marketplace, one of our great destinations, not just for locals, but among the whole region. And I'd like to talk about them a little bit more as I go on. And then also the Metropolis Performing Arts Center, which is a 300-seat performing arts center in our downtown. It has a beautiful new marquee that was just installed this time last year, um, and they are a tremendous asset to bringing people to our community. We have a very strong workforce here in Arlington Heights. We have over 42,000 private sector workers who come and work each and every day here in Arlington Heights. Our strongest sector is the healthcare field. 27% of the people who work in Arlington Heights are somehow connected to the healthcare sector. Interestingly though, one in every 10 people who works in Arlington Heights actually commutes from the city of Chicago itself. I can tell you I'm part of that 9% right there, but it shows that one, by vehicle and two, by train, Arlington Heights is connected to the entire Chicago region. 
41,000 Arlington Heights residents are within the labor pool. And they occupy a whole bunch of different uh, job sectors uh, that split up, for example, 10% work in healthcare, 10% in professional services, 10% in education, 10% in retail, 10% in manufacturing. We have a very diverse workforce that resides here in Arlington Heights. And over one in 10 of those people not only live in Arlington Heights, but work where they live in this community as well. And then highlighting our diverse and balanced economy. Our businesses conduct $1.2 billion in retail sales every year, and we have over 5 million square feet each of office space, first floor commercial space, and industrial space as well. And that's critical because as certain industries struggle at times, other industries help prop that up, and we're not married to one particular industry. Right now, the office sector is hurting tremendously coming out of the pandemic. However, in the past couple of years, our industrial vacancy rate has dropped dramatically, which has helped offset the negative impacts of office vacancy that have been experienced not just in Arlington Heights, but throughout the country thanks to the pandemic. Some of our major employers, as I mentioned before, Amazon um, reoccupied a 250,000 square foot building that was vacant and brought 300 employees to the community to operate a logistics warehousing and distribution facility. Frito-Lay, which is a subsidiary of PepsiCo, is constructing a 50,000 square foot building on the south side of our community. And they also occupy adjacent office space. So they, are, they have both sales workers and warehouse workers as well. And by the time their facility is built, they anticipate to employ nearly 100 people in our community. GE Healthcare further emphasizes the importance of healthcare in our community. They're a longtime partner. They've been here for a few decades. They have a 350,000 square foot office building on the north side of our community. HSBC, a London-based banking and financial services company, they consolidated several operations in the Chicago region here into Arlington Heights five years ago, employing over 1,000 people and taking up about 150,000 square feet of space. And within their facility, as you can see in the, the picture shown, is Northrop Grumman, the nation's largest defense contractor. Uh, three years ago, they moved an office and R&D facility into the community, and they employ over 300 people as well and occupy 65,000 square feet of space. But besides those Fortune 500 companies, we have other major employers that help make Arlington Heights what it is in terms of a business community. Northwest Community Healthcare continues to grow at a sporadic rate. Their um, uh, workforce is over 4,000 system-wide and continues to grow. Their central headquarters, Northwest Community Hospital on the southwest side of town, also continues to expand. They were just acknowledged by U.S. News & World Reports as having a top-notch cancer care operation uh, that continues to grow as well and is helping put them on the map at a national level. The Daily Herald, even though news media is changing now, they're still one of the top 75 newspapers in terms of circulation in the entire country. And they're the premier news source throughout the Chicago suburban area. And they are based on the south side of our community as well. And then I wanted to go back to Mitsua Marketplace. Just an analogy, I've spoken with multiple hoteliers who say, we have people who come and stay two nights an entire weekend from Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, just to go to Mitsua Marketplace. They will literally make a weekend of that. And one, it highlights what an asset they are to the community, bringing and introducing so many people to Arlington Heights. But two, uh, Mitsua Marketplace is more than just the largest Japanese grocer in the Midwest. It actually is in its own way a cultural center. It, is, it has bookstores. Um, it has one of the best dining halls in the entire Chicago area. Um, it also offers gifts and services. Um, it's really, it's more than just a grocer. It's actually, in its heart, truly a cultural amenity as well. International business presence, um, we're privileged to have, I believe, at least 20 members of the Japanese Chamber of Commerce of Chicagoland that are based here in Arlington Heights. And we're going to be Lucky to speak with two of them, Figaro and Kanamatsu, in a little bit here. Um, but to go beyond that as well, uh, Vitron, Integrated Logistics, 
they are a Bavarian-based company that's North American operation is based here in Arlington Heights. And just two years ago, we helped them uh, purchase and expand into an additional 15,000 square foot facility. Um, and so we look to have, have them continue to grow within our community as well. And as I mentioned before, HSBC is one of our largest employers in the community, and they are headquartered out of London. So a business or a developer or an investor comes to Arlington Heights and asks, how can Arlington Heights help us? Where do we go? What do we do? Um, there are all kinds of things we do, and I kind of wanted to summarize them in maybe kind of seven or eight bullet points here. Um, a lot of times at the get-go, the project will demand confidentiality. And so we can respect the proprietary information in regards to that and help begin the process without making it into a public process at that juncture. And among that is zoning verification and assistance, making sure that the project fits within the zoning or if it requires special approvals or if there's another more well-suiting location, in which case that goes down to site selection assistance. We work with a pool of hundreds of commercial real estate brokers that represent the entire Chicago area, but also partner with CoStar Real Estate Database to enable us to find spaces for a business or a project by the size they need, by the location they need, by the cost they need, and can break it down in tangible format and provide contacts to those people. Entitlement verification and guidance. There's often legal requirements that come with developing or establishing yourself in the community, and we want to assist with that in terms of working through our building department, in terms of obtaining easements and access agreements. And so we can assist from top to bottom in our organization in regards to that. Financial resources and assistance, whether it's working with your lender or whether it's connecting you with loans or grants or other financial opportunities throughout the, the, either the local the regional, the state, or the national level as well. And I'll go into that in a little bit as well too. Permit review and tracking. It's so critical for so many projects to stay on pace with their timeline. And so during the permitting process, we can maintain communication with the applicant, with the project coordinators to make sure that they know where they are in the permit process, if there is an issue, what needs to be resolved so that they can ensure that they move along the process as efficiently and expediently as possible. Finally, promotion and ongoing assistance. Uh, so we've cut the ribbon, or at least in Arlington Heights, we do ribbon tyings. We tie businesses into the community. Once you're open, that's not where we want to end it. We want to have an ongoing partnership with the business or the development to ensure that you are growing and expanding at the rate that you would like. And so we can continue to work with you and communicate with you and uh, be a source of service if ever needed moving forward. So as we know, this was a very difficult time for businesses in the past 18 months. Um, a lot of businesses faced challenges. Not all of them made it. A lot of them are still struggling. Um, to try and stabilize them, Arlington Heights made concerted proactive efforts to try and assist the businesses that we had in our community. And it starts with offering two interest-free loan programs. In mid-March of last year, was essentially when the shutdown happened, when capacity was essentially limited or eliminated throughout most state businesses. And so two months later, we offered a $10,000 interest-free loan program to small businesses, and repayment didn't start until a year after that. And we had numerous businesses take advantage of that to help stabilize them through the year. We also just closed the application period on a $5,000 forgivable loan program for businesses. This was funded primarily through the CARES Federal Act uh, and also through CDBG, which is Community Development Block Grant funding, and we're looking to assist businesses with that as well. One of the biggest things we did was communicating with our businesses. With our database of over 1,200 business contacts throughout the community, we sent out 58 newsletters in the 365-day period between March of last year to February of this year, letting them know about what are financial opportunities that were available, what is the state of the, of the state's reopening? As we know, in the, during the winter time, things kind of went back down in terms of closures until things reopened again earlier this year. And it was our responsibility to communicate that information as well. And any other resources that were available, including from our other economic development partners, we made those businesses aware as well. 
Um, everybody, all the businesses hurt during the recession, but perhaps none more than our restaurants. And so we made concerted efforts to try and assist them as well as we have over 150 food service businesses in Arlington Heights. We expanded outdoor dining, both at a public level, which for those who are able to stay at the end of this program, we would love to show you what we've done with the downtown in terms of that. But for those on private property, we enabled a sort of a, a loosening of zoning restrictions temporarily to allow them to have outdoor seating in public, uh, pardon me, in private parking areas that could be cordoned off and allow them to have outdoor seating adequately spaced per the state requirements to allow them to continue to operate through last summer and fall. Liquor license relief was provided, both in terms of deferrals and in terms of discounts to a lot of the restaurants that had liquor licenses to allow them to continue to operate as well. Food and beverage tax payment deferrals were also granted. And another thing we did within a week of the mid-March shutdowns, we released the Support Our Restaurants webpage, which provided a map of our community's restaurants, but also provided information on whether they were offering delivery, carry out, or curbside service, and also provided contact information as well as links to their delivery websites, such as Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and so forth. And lastly, in our downtown, for the businesses that don't have private parking, we put up curbside pickup signage for them. And that was in order to allow them to have for their customers or for their delivery drivers, the ability to pull up in front of the restaurant, quickly get the food and get out so that they wouldn't have to park a block or two away. We have several other economic development partnerships that help make Arlington Heights a successful business destination. Uh, the Arlington Heights Chamber of Commerce, uh, they are a member organization that focuses on relationship building, professional development, promotion, and assistance. Um, and they cover Arlington Heights and the greater Arlington Heights area, and they're a strong partner of ours, as is Meet Chicago Northwest, our tourism agency that supports marketing and customer attraction and retention, especially for our restaurants, for our hotels, and also for our other special amenities. The Arlington Economic Alliance is a 13-member commission appointed by the mayor and approved by the village board that represents the business community because they represent individual businesses in Arlington Heights. And they cover a variety of sectors, retail representatives, real estate representatives, industrial, restaurants, and so forth. They provide business representation, advocacy, and education as well through newsletters and seminars. They are also often asked by the village board to provide recommendations on certain issues as well. Select Chicago, um, we're all familiar with Select Chicago, but they are a great partner and we are a very early partner of theirs. And we appreciate everything they do to connect us with foreign direct investment, but not just new foreign direct investment, but for example, in the case of like Figaro and Kanamatsu, an opportunity to work with the businesses that are established here in the community and see how we can help them grow and make their business more successful. And so it is a two-way street, not just attraction, but retention and what we can do from our end to help these businesses and these developments. Incentive programs. Uh, we offer a couple programs for developments and businesses to try and help them um, essentially meet a gap that they may need to get open or to grow in our community. Cook County offers a couple of property tax abatement programs, the class six and the class seven programs. Class six is for industrial and class seven is for commercial. And what they're designed for is long-term vacancies that experience significant reoccupancy and rehabilitation. You can get a significant property tax abatement that requires both municipal and county approval as well. And it is a process that we can guide developers or businesses with. In addition to that, a program that's very unique to Arlington Heights is our zero interest loan program. For businesses that need tangible expenses paid, we offer an interest-free loan of up to $20,000 that can be repaid for up to five years, as long as it is, again, for tangible expenses such as build out, in terms of purchase of equipment or energy efficiency improvements as well. So speaking of foreign direct investment, I want to turn it over to my boss and favorite Englishman, Charles Perkins. He is the Director of Planning and Community Development 
um, and is also my superior, but I'm going to let him talk about all the fun stuff that's going on in our community. So uh, thank you, everybody. I'd like to turn it over to Charles. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here this morning. Thanks, Michael. You did a terrific job uh, presenting and representing Arlington Heights. Before I go any further, I want to introduce my boss, uh, village manager Randy Reckless. He's here in addition to Mayor Hayes. Uh, that's how important this meeting is uh, you know, to have all of you here this morning uh, from your representative countries. I, I know there's some representatives from the Philippines I was talking to this morning. So thank you for being here. I understand maybe some representatives from Chile. Uh, I'm not sure if any other countries are represented. Uh, if there are, please uh, you know, put your hand up and tell us where you're from. Okay, from French region, fantastic. Anybody, anybody else? Okay, well, thank you so much for uh, being with us this morning and, and listening and hearing about Arlington Heights and, and the other presenters uh, that we'll, you'll hear from later this morning. So uh, downtown Arlington Heights, uh, we've been redeveloping Arlington Heights for 20 odd years, and um, it's uh, an award-winning downtown. We've won a national award for planning and, and development of the downtown. It's really become a destination for the region over the past few years uh, with uh, many restaurants and shopping and dining uh, activities in the community. And hopefully you'll get the chance to take a walk around uh, over the lunch hour. Uh, last year, as Michael mentioned, during the pandemic, uh, we looked at what we could do to help our businesses. And in the downtown area, we closed several of the streets and allowed uh, alfresco dining in the streets. It has proven very, very successful. The National Restaurant Association estimated that 100,000 restaurants closed in the United States last year. Uh, we're proud that downtown Arlington Heights there wasn't a single restaurant that closed. There were some restaurants that indicated in, in this year, their sales this year, the strongest for a month in June that they've ever had, and some restaurants had been in operation for 20 years. So. As people are getting back inside the restaurants, they're also frequenting the, uh, the alfresco outdoor dining, and it's become a, a really destination, very, very popular place. And we've got a 98% approval rating from customers that come from around the region and uh, enjoy uh, the Arlington alfresco area. Uh, primarily, what I'm going to talk about is uh, future development. So downtown, uh, we have uh, some additional development opportunities. Uh, earlier this year, we approved Arlington 425, a mixed-use development, 319 residential units with about 10,000 square feet of commercial space in a 10-story building, a five-story building, and a four- to five-story parking structure. We also have uh, a small uh, row home development that's under construction. And even during the pandemic, we had three restaurants that opened right at the beginning or during the pandemic, and they're still open. And and doing well downtown. Uh, Community-wide, we have a number of different developments. Michael touched upon Amazon and some other warehouse distribution facilities in our manufacturing areas. Uh, we have a development called Arlington Downs. It's a 30-acre site just west of Arlington International Racetrack. It was approved as a mixed-use development several years ago. The second phase of the residential is nearing uh, completion, should be getting occupancies for 263 apartments. Uh, we also have a state-of-the-art rock climbing wall facility that's under construction. And I know rock climbing is in the Olympics this year for the first time, starting next week. Um, so this is a 50,000 square foot indoor rock climbing facility in a former closed uh, water park. And it'll be a regional draw uh, for this area. And also tonight uh, on a conceptual committee for review is a third phase residential development of about 350 units that'll be discussed on the site as well. We also have three uh, other redevelopment areas, uh, one about a mile east of downtown. That's called the Hickory Kensington area. We have a 76 unit mixed use residential development. We're hoping we'll get started on the construction this year. Arlington International Racecourse that I'll talk a little bit about, and also the South Arlington Heights Road corridor from I-90 uh, up towards where, where our building is here. So talking about South Arlington Heights Road corridor, um, a few years ago, uh, some of the hoteliers along this corridor came to the village and said this you know, corridor is really not um, attracting the business that they need um, and that uh, there were opportunities to do better things. So we did a two-year study. The village board adopted a redevelopment plan 
we rezoned some of the area and then we adopted a tax increment financing district to help fund some of these improvements. And the, as you can see on the exhibit here, there are about six sites that are potential for redevelopment. Uh, two key ones that I'll point out, one right at the corner of um, I-90 and Arlington Heights Road. It's about a 15, 16 acre, what we call gateway uh, development. We're working with uh, developer Bradford Allen on um, uh, multi-use, mixed-use development for that site. And then we have our TIF district at Golf and Arlington Heights Road that we're uh, still trying to pursue redevelopment of that. Um, lastly, what I'd like to touch upon is Arlington International Racecourse. I think everybody's familiar with that property. It's kind of an iconic landmark. Has been, uh, you know, almost in uh, racing for almost 100 years. It's got a really storied uh, history. Um, and it's bittersweet uh, when earlier this year the, uh, the owner, Churchill Dans, announced that they were putting the property up for sale. It does represent a, a unique dynamic opportunity for additional redevelopment on the property. The property is uh, 326 acres. It has immediate access to uh, a metro train station. It has great access to Illinois Route 53 and I-90. And uh, as I mentioned, it has the, the opportunity to be a one-of-a-kind redevelopment. I'm sure uh, those of you following the media have read various uh, stories about different uses that may go at this location and it's still kind of early days to predict you know which developer or investor group will get the property under contract and then after that it'll take uh, many months and years to develop a plan and go through the entitlement process before uh, construction and occupancy but just wanted to touch and highlight a, a few of the upcoming future uh, redevelopment uh, sites and projects in the community and at that point, uh, to turn it back to Michael for uh, Q and A. Thank you very much. All right, maybe we just can do it from the panel here. Or can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, happy to uh, happy to take any questions anybody might have. I'll go first. Uh, Michael, uh, great job over the last year, year and a half with COVID. I've got to see a lot of the. Uh, work you've been doing behind the scenes with Select Chicago. Uh, the question I have for you is coming out with the new ARPA or ARPA dollars that are coming down. Have you guys put together a good plan on how you're going to work with the business community for economic resilience? Sure. Well, part of the thing too that ties into the uh, $5,000 forgivable loan program, um, that obviously ties in a part of it. And obviously, yes, we're, we're using that that those funds to support the business community as well. Um, and it's also, it's a balance too as well, because we also have residents that are also struggling through the recession. And we've looked as we've gotten federal funding um, to sort of try to strike a, a balance between that. Um, but I think the biggest thing in terms of besides using those, those funds to try and support the businesses is just ongoing communication, trying to learn what the businesses need and maybe connect them with perhaps better resources uh, that go beyond what we can offer through that. I'll take another question for you. Uh, for our international companies, mm -hmm. as a lot of them can actually also access the SBA piece, are you gonna help, will you be helping the international companies in Arlington Heights access any of the additional programs that are available? Yeah, of course. I, Coming to when you're established or establishing yourself, at least here in the Chicago region, if not nationally, uh, often the, your local government is the best place to start. Um, and so I, I think of my position in the department planning and community development as sort of your point person for I don't know how to establish contact with them. Can you assist us? And so that's a role where I play, where, of course, I'm absolutely happy to serve as the ombudsman or the channel for whether it's the SBA or whether it's another governmental entity, as I often have contacts through them. Sure. Thank you. Of specifically for office? Sure, absolutely. So uh, during my presentation, I mentioned that we're, we're very fortunate to have gotten a substantial new office user. Um, that said, um, office is struggling 
throughout throughout the region. Um, currently in Arlington Heights, um, it's actually better than the submarkets, and we're still in the ballpark of 15 to 20 percent vacancy. Although it is starting to slightly improve, I think as perhaps companies start. Um, focusing more on getting people into the office and a little bit away from work from home. Um, so we're seeing gradual improvement as we come out of the pandemic from that. Um, but where we've seen the largest improvement is in our industrial sector, where a few years back we had about a 15% vacancy rate. Now it's down to about 5%. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Sure, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, there are several organizations throughout the area that offer opportunities to, oh, I'm sorry, okay. So I, I believe the question, if I make Mr. Consul General, is basically what sort of opportunities for perhaps those businesses and companies in manufacturing perhaps um, may have in terms of education and workforce development. Is, is that correct? Vocational training. Great, okay, so in terms of vocational training, thank you, sir. Um, yes, absolutely, there are a few different sources for that, I will say. The first one that comes to mind is uh, the Illinois Department of Employment Security offers sort of a wealth of opportunities for either training or workforce development as well. A second one uh, is actually Harper College. In the past five or six years, they have made concerted efforts to offer educational programs to perhaps those who want sort of don't want to follow the four-year college educational track and maybe do want to get into manufacturing, which, you know, a lot of people still don't realize um, is a tremendous opportunity uh, that often pays well but still requires a level of education, for example, uh, with automation now and being able to operate the machines. Um, and then there are various um, um, industrial uh, agencies, not quite like chambers of commerce, that also offer opportunities as well. So any company that is interested in exploring those opportunities, I'm happy to make an introduction with those entities and continue the lines of communication as well. Yeah, and, and I can add to that as well. Uh, PPO is now working on a statewide apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. So I can work with Michael to get more information on that. I was with PPO last week, so it's a new program offers a lot of training for the employer to bring in uh, young people that need advanced training to be impactful in the manufacturing sector. Thank you so much. If I could also add, uh, local high schools are working very closely, not only with Harper College on that vocational connection, but also with local manufacturing businesses. Uh, a good friend of mine owns his own manufacturing facility and he's actually going into the high schools and working with those students and then they're going to his business as well as a way to you know get them interested in the manufacturing side of of the equation as opposed to uh, just a four-year college route They don't want to buy the house. Mm -hmm. They want to rent for two or three years. So talk to us about the rental housing market and what is your guidance on renting like an American style home for two or three years? What is your guidance on finding a good rental agent that can do that? Yeah. Repeat the question. Yeah, that's that's a great question. So if perhaps we have people who maybe are looking to rent a single family home for a few years. Essentially, what is their opportunity? How do, how do they find out about that and how can they do that? How can they pursue that? And that's a great question. 
Um, I mentioned earlier in terms of site selection for businesses, an extensive sort of network of commercial real estate brokers. But we also have an extensive network of residential real estate brokers as well. And I think they're really the professionals with the people whose sort of finger is on the pulse to say, here are the opportunities available and being able to connect those people with them. I encourage, um, if they're not sure who to approach in regards to that, a person who's maybe looking to, or a family looking to rent a home, uh, to reach out to us and we can perhaps um, connect them with a real estate organization that can tie them into opportunities that are available in Arlington Heights or just the greater region. Uh, yeah, I maybe time for one more question if anybody has one. No. Let's wrap it up then. Oh, do we have a question? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, Aaron, thanks for pointing that out. We, and we have uh, representatives here from Elmhurst and Skokie, and thanks so much for coming. And the, one of the great things about Select Chicago is it does tie us all together. Um, it's not, the Chicago metro area is made up of, I think, about 160 or 70 different communities. And we're all stronger when we actually work together. It's better for us to get a project than for it to say go to another midwestern city or to go to one of the coasts and so what select chicago has been able to do uh, is bring our communities together our different suburbs so that we can work together and that if perhaps there is an opportunity that has broached us that isn't a fit for our community we have an opportunity to extend that opportunity to our neighboring communities and it works both ways um, it, it really uh, even though we are responsible for representing our individual communities. We're also representatives of the greater Chicago area as a whole in terms of advocating it and showing why the whole region is a great place to live. And so this is just one opportunity for us to all kind of work together and, uh, and progress in that regard. Thanks everybody. Thank you.